got all my parts for my cylinder out of the ultrasonic cleaner. I'm going to do the assembly, but here's uh, something I noticed when we took the engine apart, and I just want to point it out now. And again, this is a 2013. This is the top valve for the power valves. And see that? That wear mark? That's from rings. Uh, the rings actually bulged out into the cylinder enough to um, put a little wear mark on that power valve, and they're definitely hitting it. So we're going to put a little clearance on that, but uh, just something, this is not something common that I see in a lot of YZs, but this I, I'm seeing it on this, and this doesn't have enough time to where uh, I'm saying something got worn out in it, and that's that's what happened. So um, just keep in mind, if you have this kind of a power valve setup, and there's a lot of YZs that have this, uh, keep an eye on that. Something like this needs to be relieved. This is all the components of the power valve on the uh, YZ250, and we'll show you how to get this thing put back together. At this cylinder, the view here is upside down, just for filming purposes. It's going to be a lot easier for you to see it, but just keep that in mind. Um, the, the slider valve, right here, see that little notch? That faces up towards the top of the cylinder. And just slide this in. I know. You know, there's a lot of different types of people that watch these videos. Some are thankful for the information, and other some guys are just complete assholes. And uh, I know somebody's going to say, "How come he's not using oil?" Um, I'm going to oil all this after. It's just a lot cleaner job without the oil right now. Oil's going to saturate into this, and in the words of the great Mitch Payton, "If it's getting gas, it's getting oil." So uh, I'm a firm believer in that, and uh, that's why we're doing things the way we are. These are the side valves, sub exhaust ports. And we're going to slide these in with these little slots and pins facing directly out of that hole. I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll show you what to do next. Next piece to install is this actuating arm. Again, keep in mind this cylinder is upside down, so with these little pins sticking up, you want to take the fork and make sure it aligns with the pin in the sub exhaust valve sub exhaust port valve whatever you want to call it and just uh, finagle that in there you've got it in at this point you can just take your finger and move these pins around get a pointer in here move these pins around and just confirm that the valve in this section is opening and closing Next step is to secure the mechanism, and what we're using for this are the uh, Phillips head screws with a washer, uh, one in each hole. Next, we're going to drop this guide plate in and use the two Allens that came out in the holes to secure that. Here's the rest of the components, or a good majority of the rest of the components to the power valve, and I'll see if I can get this laid out for you. We're going to put this shaft through. But all of these pieces have to slide over that shaft as the shaft is being pushed in from this side of the cylinder. These pieces, this and this, are going to move these arms for the sub-exhaust. Those have to be put in in the correct spot. So again, the cylinder being upside down, that's the layout right there. So you notch towards the outside of the cylinder and the same thing on the other side, notch on the outside of the cylinder. All right, basically, you should have something that looks like this. And the next step is we're going to put the little Allen, head, Allen heads in here that retain all of these pieces into the shaft. Tomo says it's confusing to do this upside down, and I said, I have to film it like that. Tomo's always thinking outside the box. He says, well, why don't, why don't you put the camera upside down? Some kids, man. Once you have the valve assembled, there's a little retaining plate and a screw. Get those in here. This is the right side of the cylinder sitting on the bike. This would be the right side. And this is the dummy plate. This one goes on this side, and the one with the hose goes on the opposite side. Next step is to put this front cover on. Uh, this gasket has a little relief in it right here. This goes up towards the top. And the cover is pretty easy. It says up on it. That has to go up. It's just a little buffer for a, a stop on the power valve. Ready to put the cylinder on, next step is to put the alignment pins in, gudgeon pins, whatever you want to call them, and uh, your new base gasket, never reuse these gaskets obviously, get your cylinder cleaned up, uh, pistons already been installed, uh, oiled, clean, everything's nice and clean, cranks oiled, main bearings are oiled, and then we're just going to squeeze the rings and slide the cylinder on next. 
Just a quick shot of the piston. Make sure when you put your rings on, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you know this, but I should never do that. Make sure when you get your rings on, you have pins in here. And that gap, that pin has to be in the middle of this gap. And you have another one over here as well. And when we squeeze the ring, the ring will close around that pin, and then we'll just slide the cylinder on. Next, we're going to install the four-cylinder nuts and torque those down to 30 foot-pounds. Uh, you're going to find on the back nuts that it's pretty easy to get a socket down there and get some torque on it, but when you get into the front, uh, you're going to have to come up with something. This is built a few of these. That's a 14 millimeter wrench cut off onto a 3 h drive socket with the length calculated. So I reduced the torque by 10%, so I'm going to torque these at 30, so I'm going to torque them to 27 foot-pounds because you have a lever here. Attach my torque wrench here, get it straight, and then that's how I'm going to accomplish the torque on the front studs. Next thing I'm going to do is hook up the actuator for the power valve. And it's got some flats on it, it's flat on the shaft to just get this thing lined up. And I'm going to uh, throw the bolt in. Once I get it lined up, I'll show you what we're doing. Got everything lined up, um, preload set on the actuator, and got my pin back in here. And at this point, we're just going to tighten this up. I think the torque is, is five foot pounds, but we're going to get this thing all torqued up and uh, go from there next. Next, we went ahead and put our, our head gaskets in our O-rings. Um, just a hint with this, same thing. If, if it's uh, popping out on you sometimes, it may have stretched out in the manufacturing process. You can do the same thing with the Vaseline. Just use a little bit inside the groove. Push it down, it'll hold it. Another thing, if it seems like it's too small, you can stretch these a little bit. Just uh, use, your, use your head and be careful and a little discretion goes a long way. Alright, next thing we're going to put the cylinder head on and get everything torqued. Um, and that link lever right here is actually three foot-pounds. So if uh, you did torque it to five and bad things happened, then I've got to apologize for that. Get some nuts and washers on. When you're securing the cylinder head, you've got these little, I'm going to say copper, copper brass, I'm really not sure what they are, uh, but it, those washers, they have to be there. Once you get everything finger tight, torque these nuts down to 18 foot-pounds, again, always crisscross pattern. Do that in three or four steps, you'd be golden. We're going to put this cover on the power valve next, um, genuine Yamaha gasket and pretty cool let's get the stuff on the back of it we can just peel out away and stick it right to the cover and make sure you get this rubber piece in here all right in the words of Van Halen it's all over but the shouting uh, I don't need to show you how to do this stuff I mean anybody here can uh, put the reeds on and the kicker and the shifter so we're gonna save you a little bit of time um, this is our 2013 YZ 250 build covers a lot of different years I hope this helped you out, at least saved you the cost of a manual. Uh, if this is something you feel like you can handle after watching these videos, that's great. It makes me feel good. If you can handle it, uh, surely take your engine, put it in a cooler, give me a call, and send it into Kennel Connor Racing, and that makes me feel even better. Um, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. KennelConnorRacing.com.